Thy children shall die of hunger, and thou shalt fall to the sword. Right. A lot of you so-called white people and you other nations, your children going to die of hunger. And you too. You going to die too. You're not escaping. Let me tell you something, boy. When Jake, when Jake's back is against the wall and they got nothing else, they're coming for your ass, man. They're coming for your ass. You know what? When Jake, on a small level, when Jake was get, getting in with each other, Right, killing each other. You goddamn cops, you don't go nowhere near that shit. I remember plenty of times uh, shootouts was going on and the cops would not go in there. Yeah. And you got body armor on, motherfucker. You got body armor on. And you got niggas and spicks warring with each other or, or two spick gangs or two spick drug dealing cruisers going at it or two nigga drug dealing cruisers going at it. You don't even go in the middle of that. You don't want no parts of that. When them shots start ringing out, you cops step to the side. So how much more when, when Jake comes straight up at you instead of going at they selves? But that's what's gonna happen. A lot of you Negroes, West Indians, Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Dominicans, you're gonna have, you're gonna put this, put aside your differences and you're gonna fight this goddamn so-called white man. The most high is gonna make you fight this man. You gonna fight this man. All that buddy buddy shit is gonna be out the window. You gonna fight this man? You wanna know why? Cause it's gonna be life or death. You keep listening to the air of your children crying because they're hungry, and you can't give them nothing but air. And you know what? Hunger pains is a motherfucker. Cause yeah. breathing air hurts when you're hungry. But just breathing air hurts when you're hungry. The water, the water, brother, the water. Breathing air when you're hungry hurts like a motherfucker. Man. I don't know if you remember in the 80s, remember they, they were showing them Ethiopians and then a bunch of stupid ass niggas here. It's that nigga Michael Jackson, he wrote that song, We Are The World, him and Quincy Jones. Yeah, yeah. They raised, that was the biggest selling single in music history, that was 1985. Until, until Tone Lope came with Wild Thing. Yeah, yeah, well, Wild Thing basically yeah, yeah. outsold We Are The World. Wild Thing became the biggest selling single in U.S. history. They outsold We Are The World. They raised over 80 million dollars or something, and they sent it to them damn Ethiopians. And them damn Ethiopians had your ass in slavery in the ancient world. Them, they had you Negroes in slavery in the ancient world. They were the Babylonian Empire. And they had you in slavery. I remember when I was a kid back then, man, we used to make jokes about them damn Ethiopians. You know what, I don't feel no, I, I didn't feel no way back then. Because I guess I must have been, I was vicious and cruel, and I fucking feel no way about it now. Matter of fact, one of the jokes back then used to be like, um, well, what do you call a skinny Ethiopian with a pink afro? Um, you said you said an African booty scratcher, what would you think? <laughs> nah, uh, what you call a skinny Ethiopian with a pink afro, you call him a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> we, yo, we had we had jokes, yo. Yo, when we was kids in the 80s, yo, when, when they was doing it, they used to show them on TV with the stomach and like Beelzebub yeah, yeah, yeah. dancing on their eyes. And, and here it is, they were skinny as hell, but they had a god, they had a goddamn bear belly. Like they, like they was drinking, like they was putting down uh, 12 packs and shit, right? But it was just air because when you when you hunger, your stomach swells up with air, and that stomach acid is starting to eat you from the inside out. So your stomach will swell up because the acid will start eating the lining of your stomach to where it'll eat the stomach and then start eating your body on it. The acid will spill into your body and just start burning everything up. Yo, then, then it was, there was another joke we had. Um, it was, uh, let me see if I can remember. The, uh, the other joke was this one. Uh, no, 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 no. The other joke, the other joke was like, was, was this. You used to stay on hold this for me. You know, just a little levity real quick, but hey, fuck you goddamn Hamites. Because you had us in slavery. You besieged Jerusalem. And David said, uh, remember, oh Lord, give me Psalms 137. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm remembering. Like David said. David said, remember them. So I'm remembering them just like David said. Hold this for me, y'all. Hold that for me. Uh, another one. Get that in Psalms. We're going to read that real quick. Another one said... Because he, even though I'm making a joke, still bring the scriptures out. Another one we had was, like I said, that one was uh, called pink, uh, uh, a tall, a skinny Ethiopian with a pink afro. Another one used to go like, what do you call this? What do you call this? What do you call this? <laughs> nah, 
the Ethiopian with a piece of rice stuck in his throat. <laughs> yo, yo, this, 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 yo, this, yo, this, this is '85, yo. This is '85, like '86, yo. And we were just, yo, we had jokes coming like, like a motherfucker, man. Well, oh, I got another one. I got another one. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna, you know, cut, cut this shit off. But hey, it's, it's true. To hell with it, man. You know they made sport of us, man. We gonna fucking make sport of them, man. And we gonna make sport of you too, Esau. But um, what do you call, what do you call uh, a bunch of Ethiopians on the canoe? Another slave. You got it. Ah, that's my man. That's my man. He got it. He got it. He got it. <laughs> he got it. He got it. Yeah, that was another one. My man. He got, he had it right there. What do you call a bunch of Ethiopians on a canoe? A comb. They look like a comb. Oh yeah, you know, you know, you know the comb your mother used, and she used to comb your hair. Out. Look, it, it, it just, just look, they look like a, a bunch of Ethiopians on a canoe. It looked like a comb. So that was like crazy shit. You know, we had like crazy jokes, man. We had crazy jokes back then. But read that in Psalms, man. Psalms one thirty-seven and seven. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Right, the scripture said, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom, but remember them because of what? In, in the day of Jerusalem, when what? When the Babylonians came in, man. The Babylonians came in and brought us down, and then Edom, they jumped right in with the Babylonians instead of helping us, because they were supposed to be our brother. And Jacob and Esau did make peace with, with each other. Jacob and Esau, after uh, Jacob supplanted Esau, him and Esau did make peace with each other. Because if you remember the story in Genesis, we don't have to get it, but after uh, Jacob had left, because he was terrified of Esau, because back then Esau was stronger than Jacob back then. Remember, Esau was a man of the field, he was a hunter. Jacob was just a plain man. When Jacob came back, when Jacob came back to that land, uh, after he got his substance from his uncle Laban, so this, so this is uh, like 21 years later, because he worked seven years for one woman, then he worked seven years for another woman, then he worked seven years to get the substance, to get the cattle and all that, right? So when, uh, when he went back to go back to the land where he, where he grew as a child, him and his brother, he uh, he sent, I think he, he separated, Jacob, in the story it tells you, Jacob separated the cattle and he separated himself from like his uh, the wives and children, he separated and had them off to a certain area because he didn't know what Esau was going to do. Because he thought Esau was going to kill him. He was terrified of Esau. And then um, when he was coming into the land, it's like when you read the story, we don't have to get it, but when just to, uh, just to bring it out, when he was coming into the land, right, then Esau came with, with his servants and then he had met Jacob. And when Jacob met his brother Esau, it tells you in the story that Jacob fell to his feet. And he called he called Esau Lord. Because Esau was his older brother. And he did supplant him and get the birthright. So he thought Esau was going to tear ass out of me. You know what happened? They um, they made peace with each other then. They hugged each other and they kissed each other. Jacob and Esau, they made peace with each other then. So guess what? Who broke that brotherly covenant? Because the two made peace with each other back then. Who broke the covenant? You fucking Edomites, you so-called white people, you broke that covenant. You you broke that covenant. And when did you do it? Read that in Psalms 137 again. Psalms 137 to 7. Because Jacob and Esau made peace with each other back then when Jacob came back to the land that they were born in. They made peace with each other. They kissed, they they held, they hugged each other, they kissed each other. And then, then they were talking. Then Jacob uh, offered to give Esau some of his substance. It could have been, it could have been uh, 200 cows or something like that. You got to go back and read the story. We don't have to get it, but just you can just read the story. When Jacob came back after he got Rachel and um, Rachel and Leah from his uncle Laban, and he got the substance. So Esau didn't kill him. Esau basically forgave him back then. They 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 um they made up with each other. They reconciled. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Now David is saying, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. They said, race it, race it, meaning destroy it, destroy it, even to the foundation thereof. So they was on the side with the root and the Babylonians on. They were sitting over there singing songs about our downfall when they should have been helping us. 
Because at that time, we were supposed to be brothers, right? Go ahead. O daughter of Babylon who ought to be destroyed. O daughter of Babylon who ought to be destroyed. So you, but now you're going to be destroyed now. We're in the time of the virgin daughter of Babylon, which is America, a.k.a. America, because you keep all of the customs of ancient Babylon. Now we're in the time of you being destroyed, America being destroyed, the virgin daughter of Babylon. Go ahead. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. We're going to reward you the same way you served us. And we in that day and time now, man. Go ahead. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Right. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Hey, you destroyed our little ones. We didn't forget about that. Pick that sign up. And how did you do it? You damn devils in the south, you were taking little black boys and girls and feeding them to the fucking alligators. So you can have your, your fucking alligator business. So you can have your alligator cowboy boots and your alligator belts and your alligator bags and your alligator jackets, your alligator vest, alligator hat, alligator wallet. So that business was built off of the deaths of little black children. So I don't want to hear a fucking thing any of you so-called white people got to say about nothing. And even you so-called Negroes, West Indians and Puerto Ricans. Fuck what you got to say, man. That's the bottom line. Fuck you and fuck what you got to say. Because these devils, you, you eat them, you gonna pay for that. Spin it back around. Spin it back around. Eat them, you gonna pay for this shit, man. You ain't gonna be uh, prancing your ass up and down the street like you are now. Like the scripture say in Isaiah 13, it shall be as the chase row. And you just gonna be like a chase row in the wilderness. Every little noise you hear, you gonna be on end. You gonna be just like a, a row in the wilderness. You gonna be just like a deer in the wilderness. Pray. That's what you gonna be. Pray. Go ahead. This is Hosea 13 and 16. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her power. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their one with child shall be ripped up. Wait a minute, that, that happened to, uh, it said Samaria, that's talking about the northern kingdom. When the, uh, when the Spaniards, the, uh, the conquistadors, the, um, when they colonized the different islands, the Virgin Islands, and Central and South America, whether it was the Spanish, or the French, or the British, they were killing Taino, Carib, and Arawak babies. They were taking the pregnant women and ripping them open while they were pregnant because they made a bet that, oh, I bet she has a girl, I bet she has a boy. So they would cut her open just to see the sex of the baby, take the baby, rip the baby apart, test the strength to save bullets. To save bullets, they would they would use it and stomp, stomp them out with the heel of their boot. The United States Cavalry did that to Gad and Ruben. But guess what? It was going on. Those horrific acts was happening down in the islands too. You other tribes like Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, look, that was happening to you too down there, man. It didn't just happen to Judah up here in the Americas. It happened to you down there in Central and South America in the islands too. Right. Happened to you too. Go ahead. That was it. Okay, that's it on there? You got something real quick? Uh, 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 go back to Ezra. We was reading the Ezra. The second Ezra, um, chapter 15, verse uh, 57 again. Thy children shall die of hunger, and thou shalt fall through the sword. Thy city shall be broken down, and all thine sh and all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. Right. That's talking about you damn so-called white people. Y your children are going to perish with the sword, man. You're going to be broke down. You're going to perish in the field. Right. Because that famine is not just going to hit us. It's going to hit you, uh, great old American white people. You know, apple pie, good old apple pie in a baseball game. Take me out to the ball game, give me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. There ain't gonna be no peanuts. And, and Cracker Jack gonna be getting his ass whooped. There ain't gonna be no peanuts. But Cracker Jack gonna get his ass whooped. Go ahead. They that be in the mountains shall die of hunger. Right, so those of you that think you're gonna go up into the mountains, yeah, I got a mountain retreat. I got a mountain retreat. We, we got water coming down from the mountain. I got cans of spam, I got cows, I got goats, I got livestock, I got fruits and vegetables, and I'm here in the mountains. And I dare me a nigga to come up here and take what motherfucker you gonna starve because you gonna 
that you're gonna ex exhaust all of that stuff you got hidden in the mountains. And guess what? We're gonna come up there and take your shit up there too. Cause we know our way.